This video is sponsored by Trugo Republic, the precious metals experts. Talk to one of their experts today about diversifying your portfolio to help assure your future financial security. Find their contact information in the description below and pinned in our first comment. James Kaufman, World News Report today, April 22nd, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had three M-Class solar flares thus far today. We started the day off initially with a small M-Flare, an M1.06 solar flare. That was followed up by a little bit stronger flare, an M1.58 solar flare. And we just had an M2.78 solar flare here. And let's not forget that just before the day started, we had an M3.39 class solar flare. This all according to GOES X-ray flux, a NOAA product. Jumping over to spaceweatherlive.com. First off, we see that we have a 75% chance of an M class solar flare today. That ship has sailed. We also are facing a 20% chance of an X-Class solar flare today, and we will wait and see if that occurs. Now, this is the flare we talked about yesterday. It was a little bit stronger than indicated here. Notice it was out of sunspot AR3638, which is just an alpha beta sunspot. Not very complex, right? Then we move on. Our next M flare is way down here. 3645. Well, a newly complex sunspot, Alpha Beta Gamma, and it generated an M1 class solar flare. It is in the group of sunspots that are moving together and about to hit the far limb. Next, we see sunspot AR3656. Also, not a complex sunspot, generated an M2.7 class solar flare. Now, the M1 is still up in the air, but I think it's going to be coming from 3647 based on what we see from STO. And I will let you guys be the actual final word in that. All right, jumping over to take a look at those sunspot groups. Three of our main contributors here have been Sunspot AR3647 and 3638, we know, and we can add AR3645 to that list. Now it's a complex sunspot. As these head towards the limb, we all know that that's where our geomagnetic connection is, and oftentimes they become even more Earth effective. Now, AR3656 is a new sunspot just named, and it's responsible for one of the larger flares here. Let's take a look. As you can see, AR3656 right here has just come around the limb and is responsible for the M2.7 solar flare that we had at 1541. So, it looks like we've started a new party here with the very last name sunspot, AR3656. And you are invited to this party. It will take about 12 days for that sunspot to transverse the Earth-facing side of our star. We're also going to keep a close eye on 3645, 3647, and 3638. Because as they become closer to that limb, we know that that's where our actual geo rope or geomagnetic connection is to our sun that pulls us around in orbit. And oftentimes, an explosion on that far limb means a geo effective component towards Earth. So we have two things going on, three things going on here. Over to GOES, Solar Ultraviolet Imager. Just to start with, we have a coronal hole directly Earth-facing now. We should be expecting solar wind uptick, and that's usually accompanied by more earthquake activity and volcanic activity, which we're already seeing increase. 
Solar flare, well, obviously, that was the solar flare right there, although we're also seeing activity out of our new sunspot, 3656, right here. So they both simultaneously flared, probably why they have not assigned anything to the last explosion. You can see the large solar flare here, probably coming from 3647 or 3645. And then we also see our new friend over here, just named, also flaring right there. And that's going to be AR3656. All right, heading over to our Gay Region Absorption Prediction Center. We're going to see all these flares hit and all the radiation fry Earth. There's one of the M flares. We'll move on another strong flare here partially over the Aleutian Islands and South America. As we move just a tad further, we see another explosion here. Right there, that's going to cover a lot of South America and most of the Caribbean, even parts of the East Coast, probably the M-Class 2.7, 2.78, depending on who you ask. We'll continue because we should have another M-Flare here. And I'm guessing it's going to be right over the U.S. if it registers. And it did not. So the last flare we got to see was the M2.7. The strongest flare. Unless that right there is the M1. Which it very well could be. Checking our KP index for any solar storm activity, solar winds, or plasma for the day. We see absolutely nothing. Everything, the highest rating we have is at 2.67. So it's a very calm day, or we should see a very calm day on Ace and Discover. Let's see if that checks out. All right, moving over to our Discover satellite, real-time solar winds. We see that we do have some erroneous readings in plasma right here, but nothing over 10 centimeters. And really, your peak here is about two centimeters for the day so there's absolutely no plasma our shields are up and it looks like we're trying to get hit by solar weather but what could it be because solar winds are at 445 440 and plasma is most of the time below one centimeter cubed now there's missing data here for almost two hours at least an hour and a half which i don't like Closer to two hours, it looks like. The weird part is, is the missing data is only on our BZ and our GSM-5. So, usually you'll see it missing for the plasma, the solar winds, and the temperature if it's going to be missing up here as well. That's pretty freakish. But I see no solar weather hitting Earth whatsoever. Or at least Earth satellite that orbits 100 miles above the planet. You guys know I like to check things. Uh, April 22nd started right here. About 470 solar winds. And all we've done is gone down, down, down. There's a 391 just now. So solar winds are doing nothing but decreasing. Have not registered it on the KP index at all. And as far as plasma goes, we had this one strange hiccup here. And we saw that on the other chart as well, but it only goes up to 4.2. And I thought there was one that went up to 8 here. See the 8 here? Actually, I caught one earlier. I just can't grab it. Uh, so we had that one little, well, problem. I'm not quite sure what would cause that for one minute. Uh, probably just bad data. And the rest of the day, we've maintained plasma right at or way below 2 centimeters cubed. Zero plasma hitting Earth currently. So over to NASA's Goodard Isla Spiral. I thought I would check to see if they modeled any of those flares that should be inbound towards Earth with coronal mass ejection. Well, they have the same model they did up last night. And that has this plasma way, way in advance on, I guess, about the 24th, taking three days to pass through Earth. And you can see it here. 
The strange thing is, watch the plasma or the coronal mass ejection strengthen as it moves further away from the source. When does that happen unless it's encountering another source behind us? How did they model this so far in advance? You could never explain that to me. Why is the chrome mass ejection strengthening as it goes further and further away from its source? Does it not use energy to move? Uh, so that's what we're seeing here. But it looks like that plasma is going to hit on the 24th and pretty much stay with us for two or three days, according to what they have on NASA's Goodard is with Spiral. Now, with all that said, today's the 22nd, and the EESA, the European Space Agency, has us being hit by plasma today in the range of about 44 centimeters cubed, which would be a big impact. So we're going to have to keep an eye on this. They're usually right on with plasma, but NASA or NOAA, claim that nothing is inbound for today, and we see plasma is very, very light. So let's keep an eye on this, because usually the ESA nails the plasma and screws the solar winds up, just as they did today. They're at 450, not 320, as you can see below. With that said, I did check. There's no pressure whatsoever on Earth, and I would expect another in-flare, maybe even X flare today, definitely in the next couple of days. So let's keep our eyes and ears open. I'll keep you updated as things happen. God bless you guys. Please share, subscribe, and always remember that anything's possible in Bizarro World.